what is nvidia ray tracing what does it take to enable the dynamic real-time light simulating technology and what does it add or how much does it improve your experience as a pc gamer but most importantly is ray tracing in 2021 worth the performance impact let's talk about it but if this is your first time to the channel and you want to learn more about building pcs and other gaming related stuff click the subscribe button notification bell so you don't miss a thing What's happening YouTube and the internet? Terrence here and we are back inside the lab and discussing the illustrious NVIDIA branded RTX aka ray tracing and the performance impact it has in your games that supported here in 2021. Now first and foremost what exactly is ray tracing and what does it do? Historically right since the 1990s if you're a 90s baby but since the 1990s conventional 3d rendering right what you've seen in pretty much all of your games has used a process called rasterization this process uses objects created from a mesh of triangles or polygons to represent a 3d model of an object and while ray tracing has been around in media for quite a while now nvidia brought real-time ray tracing to consumers who have gpus that have enough compute power and dedicated cores to handle ray tracing workloads in real time rewind back to 2018 a time where gpus were available and affordable and well not like this or this and whatever that is But it was NVIDIA's Turing architecture that first introduced the idea of RT cores, which are solely responsible for handling all of the ray trace operations within, you know, software that supports it, or in our case, games. And it's those cores combined with NVIDIA's RTX software technology that enables real-time ray tracing lighting, which provides realistic lighting by simulating the physical behavior of light on or around objects and environments. And given how demanding hardware accelerated ray tracing is and the impact it has on your FPS, one would imagine why you would need dedicated RT cores and tensor cores, especially if you're trying to run ray tracing at higher resolutions. And if you're interested in how DLSS could boost your FPS, do keep a lookout for the car later on in this video to that video, or you can find the link down in the description box below. And now, yes, before you click off this video or skip this video, there is a noticeable difference between RTX turned on versus RTX turned off. At least in my opinion, you could be the judge of that. And also tell us down in the comment section below. But for our side-by-side -side comparisons, we will be testing ray tracing or RTX in different games at different quality presets. And now to enable ray tracing, you'll need either an RTX 2000 series or a 3000 series NVIDIA GPU the game or games to support RTX and have the Windows 10 October update version 1809 or higher, which introduced DXR, which is Microsoft's Direct X12 API, which implements real-time ray tracing for video graphic rendering. And this applies to Team Red's RX 6000 series as well, but I'm still on the hunt for a high-end RDNA 2 graphics card, so more on that later. And so we will be testing ray tracing or NVIDIA's version of ray tracing on our ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3090 with its 82 second generation RT cores. We're also not checking for the changes in CDRE here either, fam. We're also going to measure the impact it has on your FPS to see if ray tracing is worth the performance hit here in 2021. So let's roll the side-by-side -side benchmarks and of course, talk about the results.
and here we are. The beautiful dynamic that is performance versus ray tracing. And now was or is RTX on worth it in the games that we tested here today? For starters, Control has some of the best ray tracing features implemented, which handled reflections and shadows in a realistic way. It looked really impressive at times with the medium preset or on the medium preset, which also included reflections and transparent reflections having the least impact on our FPS. And then RTX enabled on the medium added this heightened level of realism with how the shadows and the ray tracing lighting behaved on the environments. The FPS difference between the high and ultra presets was minimal. Although the former average over 40 plus FPS, which given the nature of the game, like how it plays, it's really not all that bad. And then Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it was hard to notice any significant difference between same screen reflections and ray trace lighting, even at the ultra preset. Um, but it was at medium settings where the FPS took the least performance hit with high and ultra running nearly identical, but then all three struggling to really display any significant change in visuals to even warrant enabling RTX altogether. And then this was the same with Watch Dogs Legion. Some areas during the synthetic benchmark displayed more accurate reflections and defined shadows, with the medium preset providing the least performance impact on our FPS, and there not being much of a difference between the high and ultra presets. The FPS did dip into the mid 30s, and given how the game is played, or at least the, the average FPS dipped into the mid 30s, and given how the game is played, wouldn't really make for much of a playable experience. And then there was Cyberpunk 2077, which had the biggest FPS impact with RTX on, as you saw in during the benchmarking segment, but in my opinion, Cyberpunk 2077 has some of the best ray tracing features implemented in any of the games tested here today. Maybe Metro Exodus aside, especially with its latest update. And although it's pretty much unplayable at even the lowest preset, this could negate the usage of DLSS, which could still find yourself trading some of that image quality for a mild FPS boost. And I'm not beating up on CDPR's latest and greatest RPG either, but I'm going to use Cyberpunk 2077 here as an example to demonstrate some of the different type of ray tracing features that can be implemented into a game. Because it's here where at least they got that part right, right? So you have ray tracing, as a setting which enables real-time lighting, shadows, and reflections. Reflections provide more details on certain materials. Ray Trace Shadows provides high details, soft shadows from any light source. It could be the sun, a lamp, fire, etc. And then Ray Trace Lighting, which dynamically enhances the quality of the lighting and how it behaves, is generally the sole setting in RTX enabled titles that you can switch on. But depending on how it's implemented, you can choose between different quality presets in the game should any of the settings prove to be too demanding on your hardware or it drops your FPS to a state or to a rate where it's just unplayable. But if you have a 2000 or a 3000 series base graphics card, you're, you're, lucky, you're one of the lucky ones that either held on to yours, you didn't sell it, or you was able to find one at launch or throughout the 2021 tech demic, and you want to level up the visuals and the detail in your games that support real-time ray tracing. Now, depending on what that game is and the level of detail you're targeting, you may want to consider enabling DLSS, especially if you're gaming at a higher resolution like 4K or 2560 by 1440p. This could compensate for the FPS impact with RTX enabled or at best maintain a playable experience. Which again, if you want to learn more about how NVIDIA's DLSS works, watch this video next after this one. And if you want us to test ray tracing and DLSS performance combined, Tell us down in the comment section below, and while you're down there, hit, give this video a like on your way down there, and you may just get that notification next. But freedom isn't the right to do as you please, it's the liberty to do as you want. And this is what makes PC gaming so incredibly awesome. And so with that NVIDIA RTX 2000 or 3000 series GPU comes the privilege of enabling real-time ray tracing. But if it impacts your FPS to a point where the game or your games aren't playable or you can barely notice the shift in details, then you can turn RTX off, balance your settings within the limitations of your hardware, and of course, enjoy your gaming sessions. And if you don't have an RTX compatible graphics card yet, don't worry fam, you're not really missing much. The feature should continue to improve as developers adopt the software technology in their games.
But look, if you haven't seen the first parts of this series, you're going to want to watch the top playlist first and then the bottom one next for more awesome PC gaming content. Join our community by tapping the round subscribe icon down there below. Now, I do hope to catch you all on the next one. So until then, be easy.